Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. In these videos we have discussed chemical reactions in the chromosphere and today I wanted to continue the discussion. The subject is important as we are now trying to highlight the role of chemistry in the stars. You might recall that in the liquid metallic hydrogen model of the Sun, the chromosphere is endowed with the ability to harvest hydrogen and protons using condensation reactions and thereby help to conserve the mass of the Sun. Of course, if you wish to speak about chemical reactions, you should begin by examining the periodic table. In this figure, the elements which produce emission lines in the chromosphere are highlighted. You will notice a couple of things. First, helium is present. It emits several strong lines in the chromosphere, as we previously saw. Interestingly, helium absorption lines are not seen in the Fraunhofer spectrum. This is a problem if you believe that all the emission lines are random in origin. If the standard model explanations were correct, then absorption lines of some visible light should be taking place with helium as electrons move from the 2s and p shells to higher levels. Such absorption is needed in the standard model to account for all of helium's emission lines in the chromosphere and in the prominences. But the absorption lines are not there. That is why the standard model invokes that the helium must first be ionized and that the electrons must recombine to produce helium in the excited state, as we saw in this video. You will see immediately that this is simply trying to bypass observations that helium absorption lines do not exist in the Sun. This is a critical finding and it cannot be bypassed by invoking recombination as the astronomers have done. We will return to helium soon as it is critically important to understanding what is going on in the chromosphere. It is fascinating that the lines which are often strong in the laboratory are absent or weak on the Sun. This is not an accident and is again telling us that nothing is random here. The presence of chromospheric emission lines are not just the effect of that are easily based on temperature and which can be explained using the Saha equation as we saw in this video. The majority of species which produce emission lines have at least one unpaired electron involved in the transition. Two electron transitions also exist and we will devote the next video to this important observation. Note that the atoms seen in the chromosphere tend to be alkali elements in the first ionization or neutral state along with alkaline elements in the second ionization state, namely lacking one electron. In addition, we find some but not all transition metals and a surprising amount of rare earths in the second ionization state like europium too. The problem of producing chromospheric emission lines is clearly not just related to the energy required to place an atom in its excited state. Note that the aluminum line at 394.403 nanometers is visible. It involves a transition from the 3s24s1 state to the 3s23p1 state. A single electron is involved. However, Aluminum two lines are not visible in the chromosphere even though the ionization of its outer electron requires only 5.8 electron volts. Note however that aluminum two does not have an unpaired electron readily available whereas aluminum one did. That is why aluminum two lines are not seen. Conversely the calcium two lines are prominent but the ionization of calcium into calcium 2 requires 6.11 electron volts. That is even more than the 5.8 electron volts required for aluminum 2 lines. The key point once again is that the calcium 2 lines involve a single unpaired electron as you can see in these equations. Several of the other atoms which produce chromospheric emission lines adopt unusual lower energy level states relative to their known ground state. The singlet lines of oxygen are an example. 
They involve a transition from the 2S2, 2P3, 3P state to the 2S2, 3P3, 3S state. These occur as multiplets around 777 and 844 nanometers, as you can see in this spectrum. Note how this transition is not to the ground state of the atom, which would be 2s2, 2p4. The electrons are going from 3p to 3s, not to 2p4. The strong magnesium one lines are another example. They involve a transition from the 3s, 4s state to the 3s, 3p state. Note once again that the transition is not to the ground state, which should be 3s2. This cannot be an accident. Conversely, some of the atoms have emission lines where the ground state of the transition is the true ground state of the atom. An example would be the chromium line at 425.435 nanometers. It involves a transition from the 3D5 4P1 state to the 3D5 4S1 state, which is the ground state of the atom. But note that a single unpaired electron is involved even for this ground state. So one has to ask, why are the strong oxygen and magnesium lines not formed by also returning to the ground state with paired electrons? The answer is that the emission lines are associated with chemical reactions. We saw in this video that the emission lines of the chromosphere are the result of condensation reactions, whereas an atom first reacts with hydrogen and then deposits the hydrogen onto condensed hydrogen structures. The point to recognize is that in order to initially react with hydrogen, the species involved must be able to provide an unpaired electron in an S or P shell. When it finally releases the hydrogen, it returns to the state from which it came, and that now involves unpaired S or P shell electrons. It is known that the rare earth ions like europium-2 and lanthanum-2 often have a single electron in the S shell, and that this enables them to react chemically as a group one element. Group two ions like magnesium-2 and calcium-2, which have likewise lost a single electron, also share the same feature. Atoms which bind their electrons too tightly are not seen in the chromosphere, and neither are those who are too easily to adopt the electronic structure of the inert gases. Astronomers try to argue that the elements seen merely reflect low ionization energies, but it is much more than that. Many of the rare earth elements are overly strong in the chromosphere, given their expected concentration in the sun. The only explanation is that we are seeing amplification of certain elemental emission lines as a result of chemical reactions. Those elements which can participate are seen in emission, and those which cannot are not. I have argued that the key determinant of what is seen should be the ability to form a metal hydride and deliver hydrogen to a condensed hydrogen structure. I hope that you enjoyed the video today and that you are starting to appreciate the importance of chemistry in properly understanding astrophysics. If you are beginning to understand, promote the channel, mention the videos to your local astronomy club, support me with a like, subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below and I'll see you soon on our next video.